Hey guys, Jacob here from Jacob Smoke Alarm Reviews and more. Today we are going to be replacing the EGD4S with the First Alert Model 9120B. And this is a demonstration video on how to. This is not an actual install as most people would think because who the heck would have a foam ceiling and have a thermostat wire around? I know I wouldn't, but uh. Still, this is the old AC buzzer thing. So if it sounds like this, you should probably replace it with something that sounds like this. Like this first alert 9120B. I'll give it a quick test for you, but you'll see. So, first thing is first. Always turn off AC power. That's the first and most obvious thing to do. So as you can see, the alarm is no longer powered. As you will see here, when you press the button, nothing happens. So that means AC power has been cut. We can now set it up for the replacement process. Which is really not that hard, and I'll do a and I'll speed run doing this. I'm gonna beat SCR Safety's uh, replacement record because, as any smoke alarm collector would know, beating a fire alarm collector is key to being successful. All right, after turning off AC power, I'm gonna twist off the alarm here. This doesn't even have interconnect, not like it's being used, but still. Interconnect is a necessary feature in new construction. As most people would know, I acquired this alarm off of eBay. But if you just follow these steps, let's unscrew, because on very old models, you had to unscrew you had to completely unscrew the uh, mounting stuff. And there we go. You can always pull the wires through. Now, all we have to focus on is now the mounting bracket and then we're off. Looks like I'm developing a crack in here. By the way, if you have vintage alarms, send me a list it on eBay and send it to me. I don't care. Uh, link to my uh, Discord if you want to message me will be on will be in the description below. Same for Facebook. But who uses Facebook except for moms? But still, replacing an alarm is extremely necessary for protection, as I'm required to say. Even though days of this alarm lasted all the way from the 70s. Okay, now that you've gotten that done, the next step you want to do is take these screws Put them right back in because our new bracket can slide these in. You you just want to put these back in. No harm. It's easy to do and it's effective. And yes, the thermostat wire control. This little wire right here is called a thermostat wire. It controls my garage door opener. I should have done a much better job on it, but I didn't, so here we are. Okay, your 9120B's mounting bracket will slide off if you're using a 9120B. The Kitty I4618AC works the same way, except that its mounting bracket is a lot different. Yikes. Uh, it's a Corvette right there, so... But before, I almost forgot this step. You wanna, if you have interconnect, which we'll use this orange wire right here, which we don't, this is a ground and you don't touch it. Um, 
you'll only use white and black. But if you have any sort of interconnect wire, you'll want to uh, put, you want to connect orange. But in this instance, we are not. So we leave this kept. So next thing you do is take hot to hot. Always make sure AC is power before you touch any live wires. Live wires are so dangerous they could kill you. So with that out of the way, just twist them together. Give, give it a little tug and if it comes off, that means you didn't tug it correctly. That means you didn't put it in correctly. And this thermostat wire really doesn't want to stay. Which is a shame because, you know, it wanted to stay. Now, I'll give you a very kind of you thermostat wire. There we go. Now, it shouldn't be coming off. And it's very hot out outside today in the garage. So, as you can see, I'm sweating a little bit. But don't it, let it fear. I don't have a severe weight problem, as many people would think I do. Ugh, any, oh yeah, really. If I did this as a living, I really wouldn't mind. But hey, unemployed, right? So once that's done, now take your mounting bracket and get your screwdriver, your screwing driver. <laughs> and uh, tuck your interconnect wire in if not used. Now, I got a comment saying on my original EGD, oh, uh, not EGD, uh, on my original replacing a smoke alarm video, saying that if they had different colors of uh, further interconnect. Now, if you have different colored interconnect, if it's not ground, which is just bare copper wire, well, obviously, uh, no. Obviously, no. Obviously, yes, keep interconnect. It's essential if you want to have interconnecting smoke alarms. But be warned, alarms that take 9 volt ACE, that take 9 volt batteries, like this one right here, uh, they will require they will require 9 volt DC interconnect or the standard interconnect voltage. In the in the late 70s to the uh, late 90 to the late 80s, they had this thing called line voltage interconnect. And I'll explain more about that so it's hopefully in a future. Line voltage interconnect is 40 volts DC over the interconnect line. And and if you try to interconnect a nine volt, a standard, uh, a standard uh, voltage interconnect with line voltage interconnect, well then, this alarm and that alarm will both go off, resulting in chaos. And I mean serious chaos. You'll have to shut off the breaker if you want anything to shut up. And no, it's not because of faulty wiring, and no. And as we do, we plug in our smoke alarm, if you've been paying attention. Uh, and then, the next thing we want to do is go over here and switch on AC power. So you can see this, the garage door light turns back on. And we get... A green power indicator so what you want to do is press the button so if it works and if it's interconnected and it's uh, interconnecting with other smoke alarms like it should well then you'll be all good to go and don't forget you get some smoke spray and test out your smoke alarm. Anyways, that's going to do it for today, guys. Bye.